All right, I got with me here Erica of two companies. You got Electric Goddess, which is right on that sticker, and uh, Red Avivus. Would you want to give an intro on who you are, what you're up to, what your passionate projects are? Wow. Um, big question. That yeah. is a big question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not lobbing you a softball to start with. Well, who are you? That's a pretty, that's a pretty easy one. But I'm Erica. That's my given name. I also go by Electric Goddess. I got into tech in 2013 at SpaceX. Did a really cool internship on the Dragon program. And from there, I found myself on a craps table at CES with Panasonic and a bunch of battery executives. Yeah. And we did so well. They were like, why don't you come build up a battery did so startup well with us? Yeah. At gambling. I'm actually, yeah, I'm pretty great at it, actually. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought that'd be a skill I should develop? But yeah. Now, you know. <laughs> I think it's just uh, making your own luck, I suppose. I like it. And uh, I went there and I learned so much. I just sat with every smart person I could find and absorbed from them what they had to share with the world and used that to really build a holistic view on how is this upcoming technology going to be accepted by everyone else. And eventually I just kept getting promoted and was doing a joint venture with Borg Warner. And uh, we were putting manufacturing lines in Hungary, around the world. Wow. And I was like, wow, you guys are getting really rich. So why don't you tell me your business skills here and I'll give you my battery information in my brain. Yeah, good trade. And uh, I met Luke and he's a wonderful, kind person, super smart. And he was like, why don't you start your own business? And I didn't think that it was anything to really focus so much <laughs> yeah. like knowledge into or just thought. And I just sent it. So nice. I sent the paperwork <laughs> in. And, and you're how many years deep now? We started Electric Goddess in 2019. Nice. And uh, we started in our extra bedroom in our apartment with nothing. Fun. And uh, one good job after another, we built up Electric Goddess to what it is today with multiple employees. And we saw your office in El Segundo. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun to just see it. I keep my, like, one safe space of, like, mm -hmm. I have a white couch. You know, you got to be clean <laughs> to sit on yeah. there. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> I mean, you got your kombucha on tap. It's a lovely <laughs> environment to be in. So is that your Electric Goddess and your Rotavivus office? Do you do you do work for both those companies at a time, or do you kind of, like, split them up? Well, since we're so <laughs> deeply embedded into the battery industry, we were approached by our now co-founders for Red Avivus who are deep in mining, so Rio Tinto mining and metals like Castellium aluminum. And they were like, we have this great idea for battery recycling. How can we technically do it? Mm -hmm. And uh, we, Luke and I just sat on the floor one day and came up with a thought process on, all right, here's where the industry is. Here's where we, our dream on where we think it should go. Mm -hmm. And we did all the cost modeling. We did a lot of research. I've spoke to hundreds, if not thousands of people on battery recycling. That's awesome. And uh, we funded it through friends and family, through our successful Electric Goddess company. Mm -hmm. And we've done a proof of concept. So essentially With we- e-bikes, right? Yeah, well, it's actually a bunch of different materials. Okay. So and some of them have, you've, you've successfully done an electric vehicle, like an Arkimoto battery, is that true? It is true, yeah. So that That's was a a, such a big step for yeah. us to have that partnership with Archimoto and take their batteries and turn it into shreds. More batteries. Also. Right. <laughs> turn it into shreds and neutralize those shreds, make it safe to ship, and then recover metals from it, like nickel and cobalt. And yeah. it's kind of amazing to just see, like, a dead, damaged battery that like might have some scorch marks on it and then just hold up a piece of nickel and be like, look at what I made. Yeah. And also look at what I made cost effectively, yeah, which is kind of the big thing. The key yeah. things. That is absolutely wonderful. And do you think, like not to be too forward looking, uh, but like, do you think this is like scalable or it's like hypothetically all the electric vehicles that are being manufactured today, their batteries could eventually one day off in the future, it could all be recycled? I think that the battery industry, I read some on the internet that... The interwebs. Yeah. It's right now a $115 billion industry, and then it's just going to continue to grow yeah. Yeah, like exponentially over the next 10 years. I mean, you have mandates and yeah, people working on it, smart people. And the battery recycling industry is actually going to scale exactly the same, maybe just a few years behind it. Understandable. Um, just as started a few years later. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's right now people are learning how to make batteries last on Earth. So how does it survive corrosion? How does it survive being rained on, cold, all those things? Yeah. Um, those once that happens, those batteries will last a long time, 
And then they'll be put into second use. So grid storage, alternative applications, and there's a lot of cool companies working on that. Yeah. Um, but eventually everything has to be recycled, yep. right? And at that point is where we're really focusing to make sure that we're there to turn those materials in and sell those materials to secondary markets mm. and even maybe eventually back into the battery See, that's phenomenal because that's, mm-hmm. I mean, you, you must hear it when people are like, they're, you know, they're, people call it astroturfing, like when they're pretending to support something because not a real grass, uh, grassroots movement, but people are like, oh, electric vehicles are worse for the environment than gas. Like they, they don't take into account at all that batteries are way better than they were in the 70s, as Luke was saying off air, unfortunately. We didn't have time mm-hmm. to get to it. But also the fact that it's like the batteries can be recycled. It's not like we go have to go uh, mine that. All those minerals again so that'll be a massive thing that how would anyone like argue against it once it's like their biggest thing is like oh those batteries the minerals take like are really hard to mine if we can recycle those that'll be a game changer and flipping people to be like oh this is better than gas you know there's a lot of new mines coming online to support the demand for we'll batteries but yeah. we are definitely going to need but those materials in terms finite. of like mining it and just losing and like having to keep mining it forever it's like we'll keep mining it but the fact is like those materials will stay in rotation with any luck absolutely That's i would really love to news. see everything <laughs> infinitely recyclable like just thinking about in the future being able to take any material i, I honestly think that electronic and battery recycling is going to need to be scaled to the point of like waste sanitation so right mm. now you don't see where your toilets flush to right yeah. but they have biological processes that they are handling enormous amounts of waste mm-hmm. And it's with cell phones, laptops, everything coming up, it's really going to be on that level. That's awesome because there's a lot of tech being used today. And (laughs) people probably do just throw it in the garbage. But if it could be just extracted out and it's like, would this be something you couldn't get into because it's like uh, intellectual property or something? But like, how do you separate metals that are so conjoined? Does one like boil at a different temperature? Is one magnetics? Do you like, you know, like you extract them all through various methods? It seems like if I was given... A dead battery, I'd be like, how on earth am I going to do this? <laughs> uh, just to correct you with uh, throwing them in the garbage, I think there's a lot of really great people out there, and there's just not a lot of great information on what people should do for them. Yeah. So most homes that I visit have just kind of like a stockpile of like, here's all my old cell phones. <laughs> just throw it in a drawer, you know, yeah. I don't know what to do with them. I haven't thrown a Definitely cell phone away. Definitely not me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as far as what you're asking – Nickel, cobalt, and copper are all really close together on the periodic table, which inherently makes it really difficult to separate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some clever ways people have done it. Like there are some solvents out there that a- attack specifically the nickel and cobalt to separate them. Oh, cool. Super expensive. Doesn't make a business that scales necessarily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I've also read about some cool GMO bacterias that literally go out there and just sp- preferentially eat copper (laughs) and so you can like skim the top of that off and like get copper that way Uh, we have a few different ways that we're looking at that problem so wonderful is you you developed ways to actually take those three uh, elements that are so close and find a cost effective way to remove like separate them because i saw you at pir you had uh, three little uh maybe it was four uh, vials and each yeah. one had elements in it. I'm like, whoa, that's, so cool. that's game. Thanks, I don't, yeah, I love to look at them. They're so pretty. <laughs> Absolutely. Crystals. If you pulled all 320 million Americans and you say, hey, what? Like, ask them all. Do you think electric vehicle batteries are recyclable? You'd know 99% would say no. You know, so it's like the fact that once that information gets out there, that's like something I'm very excited about. And it especially, gives me a lot of hope. Yeah. About just the future and a just ton. being Thanks. sustainable, like. You guys mean so yeah. much to me. <laughs> oh, they, you yeah. mean so much too. The fact that you guys are doing it with Arcomotos yes. is just phenomenal. Because that even, they're already, uh, Luke, at the very end, I wrapped his up by saying, so he, every decision he makes is, does this make the world better? Are we using resources more efficiently? Mm-hmm. Will it help uh, curb climate change or help us breathe fresh air? So I'm like, so with that in mind, what really made you pick Arcomotos? is like just using resources more efficiently. If one or two people is driving, it's an intermediate between a bike and a car. And it's like what even compounds on that is the fact that one of our, one of the parts of electric vehicles that's the least environmentally friendly is now recyclable or at least will be in the near future. Yeah. And just to clarify, I was talking about different ways 
uh, that we're approaching recycling, like the mm-hmm. world is approaching recycling. Mm-hmm. How Redivivus does it is we're able to get the copper out so we can sell the copper. And then we actually pull the nickel and cobalt together. And this is mm-hmm. talking specifically about one type of chemistry of battery. Yeah. Um, Joe that, listed like six or something. Yeah, <laughs> like, Holy there's cow. so many. And uh, this nickel and cobalt is actually just right now our process sells it directly to super alloy makers. Mm-hmm. Um, and metal makers because they essentially have, I heard Jill talking about a cake recipe. Yeah. Um, it's just like a big kitchen when you're using a crucible to make metals. You throw different materials in it and it comes out the alloy that you're looking for. Mm. And a lot of times they use nickel and cobalt together to make those super alloys. Cool. Oh. So that's why it doesn't really? currently recycle wrap right back into another le- a electric vehicle battery, but it can be recycled in other things. Correct, because so it's, to it's totally way... possible to yeah. recycle stuff and put it back into batteries. Yeah, uh, but you need to separate those two to make another, a, a brand new electric vehicle battery with the elements. It's it's just really finicky. It's really mm. finicky on the material that you start with to get it back into batteries. Like, if we were to shred a whole Archimoto battery, you're going to have, like, the copper bus bars. You're going to have the casing on outside of it. And a lot of recyclers are only set up to get primary material mm-hmm. out of, let's say, a Panasonic line that it's like, okay, well, we had fallout from our recycling or from our manufacturing process. And then a recycler can just take that. And it's a lot easier to recycle that yeah. cost effectively a than a whole sense. battery. Yeah. Well, that's what you I mean. You guys are taking on something. It's Luke a big he likes challenge. The, yeah. Luke yeah. said he likes the big challenge. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> the fact that someone's taking this on is the coolest thing in the entire world. So mm-hmm. just the fact that people like you are out there. And that's what also re-inspires like me is that people yeah. such as yourself, Luke, Jill, are working with Arkimoto. That's why. I'm like the whole part of this podcast is spotlighting brilliant geniuses who are doing really good for the world and then kind of being like, so why do you align with Arkimoto? Why do you decide to work with Arkimoto or like employees? Why do you work at Arkimoto? Mm -hmm. Because it's just unless you meet us personally, you'd never hear. But like the fact that, you know, it'll be like little clips. This will come out. It'll be like Erica talking about her time with Arkimoto. I'll be like, yes, then the word will get out. So I'm really (laughs) excited about it. Thanks so much. You're reflecting. I think that working with Arkimoto is really a great step in the future. Archimoto is a forward thinker. I think it's hard for a lot of Americans to kind of swallow the fact on three wheels. I want my Hummer. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> like Absolutely. why are you telling me to ride a small electric vehicle? Uh, but I live in Los Angeles, and having an Archimoto makes it a lot easier to go swing by and pick up a coffee or something like that. Absolutely, it's phenomenal. Um, <laughs> so, what's on the horizon for you in terms of like what you're hoping to accomplish with Arkimoto with um, recycling and with uh, improving battery technology. So wait, actually, before I ask that, what's your day-to-day at Electric Goddess? So I can kind of ask that question in a more refined way. I, wow. I It took me a long time to actually real, realize this is something that's probably super common in, in front a lot of conversations people are having, but health is super important. It's so easy to prioritize your business, prioritize your mission, especially when you're so passionate about it and you love doing it every day. I had to catch myself being like, okay, Erica, like go to the gym in the morning. Like it doesn't matter. Like don't pick up your phone first thing in the morning. And I've kind of had to find that balance of like, okay, let me just check, make sure nothing's like crazy today. And then go take time for myself and that has actually allowed me to like approach everything in a way more calm manner, mm-hmm. I think. And I'm I'm really excited about working with Archimoto because of this new factory that's coming out and because there's so much opportunity to create an environment where that really is that full circle of product development. Right now everyone's so focused on I'm faster than a Tesla <laughs> or I'm the sexiest bicycle there is out yeah. there. And even though that's all great and it all really sells, I mean, I honestly, I think aesthetics are super important. I also think that there needs to be more conscious development on what are we actually going to do with this what's when the it's why done. That the, what it is exists. Like what's the actual part, like why reasoning behind just like, it's a sexy car that goes really fast. I was like, <laughs> no, like what's, what is really the purpose? And that's why like, um, you know, after these four guests, I'm excited for hopefully Mark to be the next one and just ask <laughs> him all these big whys, you know, and just yeah. like, cause c- cutting clips of that, hopefully like 20, you know, vertical clips will come out of it mm-hmm. where people can hear like right from Mark, like 
he, this is why Arkimoto does it this way and this way and this way. So his is going to be the first podcast that I really write a bunch of formulated questions for. And then like episodes like these, so many clips are just going to come out of like fun, yeah. goofy, little sporadic things, which oh, I think so turns bad. out a lot better. But I want answers from that guy. <laughs> I think a lot of people <laughs> would be great. really interested. His keynotes are just so profound, which is really how exciting to watch in person. That's yeah. cool. But, well, in effort to get a good clip here, too. Yeah. Um, you asked me what my everyday life is yeah. as a double CEO squared, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say that I wake up very excited to work on what I'm working on. I would say that I get to talk to a bunch of brilliant scientists, engineers, thought leaders all around the globe, actually, yeah. uh, who want to talk to us about their battery technology, about the products they're building, and even people who are really are thinking ahead on recycling. And th that to me, since I've been in the battery industry now for a few years, uh, getting to actually see more of the development on the recycling side is very exciting. I think what is really missing from that industry is that there's a lot of people who know it's an issue mm -hmm. and want to solve the issue and have all the good intentions. But if they don't have the background of a battery scientist or battery engineer, yeah. it's really hard to understand the problem at its core. Mm -hmm. And I would say when you're starting a business, you need to understand the problem that you're solving at a really deep level to be able to provide a solution that would be adopted widely. Yeah. And is there a reason, I mean, there has to be other like battery specialists out in the world. Is there a reason that you believe like even the people who do have the background haven't tried tackling this? It's like, like what makes you the first, like some of the first people to like really make headway in like recycling battery it seems mm -hmm. almost unheard of that. It's like, I'm meeting some, like the people who are kind of, you know, leading the charge in recycling batteries. Cause it seems like Panasonic has a ton of people who are really brilliant working for them and they're a bad battery manufacturer. Like why were they never uh, inspired to be like, let's fix this massive problem that's facing the world? I think there are people that are doing that. I mean, the mm. company that comes to mind is Redwood Materials and what they're doing is... I mean, their founder came from Tesla, worked at Tesla, had the same mentor actually as Luke. Wow. And so it's really interesting whenever we talk to him, they're like, oh, do you know that he's doing recycling too? And I, I say I always root for them. And I think that they're doing a really great job. They are solving a niche part of battery recycling. So that's mm -hmm. kind of going back to what I was saying is like, if you're recycling directly off of a cell manufacturing line, mm -hmm. it's very different than the problem that what we're working to solve. Yeah. And so I see them as very collaborative in a way or complementary. Yeah. That's awesome. You'll acquire them eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Or they can acquire us. That'd be yeah. great. <laughs> that'd, be, Love it. that'd be exciting. I have a really kind of, it's, it's not relating to kind of to the business, but like you guys deal with really difficult questions. Yeah. And like difficult problems and like, does it ever become very mentally taxing for you to like think about all these problems and like you guys are working on solutions, which I'm sure is hopeful, but like, how do you keep just a positive outlook with all the difficult and potentially negative things going on? That's a really good question. I think eventually uh, you have to come to terms with the way that you view the world is your responsibility and your responsibility only. Feeling positive or negative towards something is a personal choice. We all have different backgrounds. We all have different brain chemistries, the way that our bodies work. Uh, but at the end of the day, it really is. We are our own spirit in our own body piloting this random, chaotic, beautiful universe. Mm -hmm. And I think just focusing on me wanting to feel light, I want to ascend out of my body and turn into a rainbow, and I'm going to do everything possible at the right time, of course. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not right now before this work's done. But of course, uh, keeping that at the forefront and just understanding of I have hope for humanity. I have hope that I meet so many good people every day. Mm -hmm. And I think just all kind of talking about those things that we're working through and working towards instead of building a more like competitive environment, which is really what's been put as like a value yeah. to be capitalistic. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, a business has to make money. You have to put that at the forefront, mm -hmm. but you also need to be responsible in that way because everything that's parasitic 
will eventually have to end. Mm -hmm. You have to live in harmony with the things that you're building. Multiple companies can win. They can both win, you know. That Mm -hmm. is a really positive. And you see it a lot in the electric vehicle field. Like other, like Mark celebrates and uplifts other electric vehicle, like electric scooter makers and all these things. It's like really beautiful to see someone who's like a startup founder. like That believes in the win-win. Believes in the win-win. It seems like people who kind of come into this field for their like why of like wanting to make the world better they seem like they're like i don't care who does it as long as it gets done kind of thing and i just i think that's really neat yeah we all have our special skills that we were born with and i think following those things that are really important to you we all find the place that we need to be Awesome. I'm looking forward to the next time you come on, you'll be a CEO cubed. I don't know what you're going to do next oh, no. week. Maybe <laughs> even another one. No. What's, what's really cool about Electric Goddess is, I mean, it was crazy work getting to where it is now. Like, if someone told me that that's what I needed to do to get it to where it is, yeah. I, I may have not even started, honestly. Wow. Um, but now Electric Goddess is more of a, like, young kid or something like that where – the company can tell me what it needs, right? You know, there's a lot more processes where it's like, here's how you're going to operate. And with that, you know, I still like to stay in the know with it. And I get to use that knowledge to help build another one, which is really cool and exciting. What would you say to your younger self with all the knowledge you've gained of building a company? Like if you were someone like before you made this business, you're like, I want to change the world. I have an idea. Like what would you tell your younger self about your experience I guess what's been really cool to see and really comforting and I'm so grateful to be surrounded by people that are like-minded and just wonderful is when I was younger I would just question myself on why do I believe these things no one else feels this way or why do I have why do I think about things differently than others And it really wasn't until I kind of grew into myself and challenged myself through becoming a founder that I got to see, like, this is why I'm different. And this is why I'm able to do the things that I'm able to do. That's really cool. You're like, I don't know if I fit in, so I'm just going to make a spot exactly for me. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So the the end of it was just just do it. If you want to do something, just do it. Yeah. (laughs) Cool. Exactly. Love it. Thank you very much for coming on, being one of the earlier people setting the tone for the show. Um, do you have, do you people, uh, if you had a link of something, would it be your website or an email or like, is there a message you want to say and a way to contact you you'd want to put out there? I think uh, Luke's thing, if I heard it correctly at the end, he was like, hey, we have the capacity to test this thing. <laughs> I was like, oh, fascinating. I've never had someone yeah. feel that before, but it's Quick like something pitch. that yeah. if someone, it, yeah, not even a sales pitch, but it's like someone's like, oh, I'm running into this problem. I just need to test this, but I don't have the capability. Yeah. Like Luke's literally ending the episode, which people who made it to the end, they're probably very knowledgeable in batteries. I'm like, that's really cool, actually. So if you have anything, I guess it's getting broader by every guest what they promote. <laughs> um, I'd be happy to, to list anything. I would love to hear from anyone who wants to electrify their world and has great ideas on fun projects. You can follow us at electricgoddess.co. And if you want to learn more about battery recycling, we took on some more co-founders, which is why it's a separate venture. And you can find information on that at redavivus.tech. Beautiful. I'll put links to both of them in the description. I appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.